Good afternoon, this is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering the Moral. My dining room table in another place now. My incense. My portable tea light. And poetry, T.S. Eliot. So you can say that T.S. Eliot and I, with the poem, The Wind Sprang Up at Four O'Clock, which I am art, arting, doing some artwork for. I also drew some cards. And you can say that we called up Apostle Matthew through Karakampa's interpretation. Matthew chapter five. reading from the New English Bible, the older edition. I don't think any more of these are being made, actually. Sermon on the Mount. When he saw the crowds, he went up the hill. There he took his seat, and when his disciples had gathered round him, he began to address them. And this is the teaching he gave. How blessed are those who know they are poor. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. How blessed are the sorrowful. They shall find consolation. How blessed are those of a gentle spirit. They shall have the earth for their possession. How blessed are those who hunger and thirst to see right prevail. They shall be satisfied. How blessed are those who show mercy. Mercy shall be shown to them. How blessed are those whose hearts are pure. They shall see God. How blessed are the peacemakers. God shall call them his sons. How blessed are those who have suffered persecution for the cause of right. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. How blessed you are when you suffer insults and persecution and every kind of calumny for my sake. Accept it with gladness and exultation, for you have a rich reward in heaven in the same way that persecuted the prophets before you. You are salt to the world, and if salt becomes tasteless, how is its saltiness to be restored? It is now good for nothing but to be thrown away and trodden underfoot. You are light of the world. A town that stands on a hill cannot be hidden. When a lamp is lit, it is not put under the meal tub, but on the lampstand, where it gives light to everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellows so that when they see the good you do, they may give praise to your Father in heaven. And the only thing I'm going to say about this is shut up. Do not suppose that I have come to abolish the law and the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to complete. I tell you this, so long as heaven and earth endure, not a letter, not a stroke, will disappear from the law until, until all that must happen has happened. If any man therefore sets aside even the least of the law's demands and teaches others to do the same, he will have the lowest place in the kingdom of heaven. Whereas anyone who keeps the law and teaches others so will stand high in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless you show yourselves far better men than the Pharisees and the doctors of the law, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have learned that our forefathers were told, do not commit murder. Anyone who commits murder must be brought to judgment. What I tell you is this, anyone who nurses anger against his brother must be brought to judgment. If he abuses his brother, he must answer for it to the court. If 
he sneers at him, he will have to answer for it in the fires of hell. If when you are bringing your gift to the altar, you suddenly remember that your brother has a grievance against you, leave your gift where it is before the altar. First go and make your peace with your brother and only then come back and offer your gift. If someone sues you, come to terms with him promptly while you are both on your way to court. Otherwise, he may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the constable and you will be put in jail. I tell you, once you are there, you will not be let out till you have paid the last farthing. You have learned that they were told do not commit adultery. But what I tell you is this, if a man looks on a woman with a lustful eye, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is not talking about sexual sin. This is talking about lust. You would have to read the entire book of Enoch to understand it. Don't be a Christian right here. Either be a pagan, an atheist, or an agnostic. That's your three choices. I'm going to skip some. Verses 43 through 48 will be my conclusion. You have learned that they were told, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But what I tell you is this, love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. Only so can you be children of your heavenly father who makes his sun rise on good and bad alike and sends the rain on the honest and the dishonest. If you love only those who love you, what reward can you expect? Surely the tax gatherers do as much as that. And if you greet only your brothers, what is there extraordinary about that? Even the heathen do as much. You must therefore be all goodness, just as your heavenly Father is all good. The Beatitudes are being updated. Since the king of kings was speaking to Jews who were going to kill him, I am certain if you have any intelligence about you, you can imagine what the Beatitudes would be in this modern day with all of the evolution that took place after he arose, which is in the gospel record. It is certain we are in miraculous times. What is not certain is why. So many people are so mixed up about what is p politically correct in the United States of America. Enough Said by Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovered No More.